is the story of Tilly the trolley and Billy the bus. Their story is dedicated to that passenger who moves to the rear of the trolley or bus so that some of his neighbors may also ride. To the fellow on the inside who thinks enough of the fellow on the outside to move further inside so the fellow on the outside can get inside. Complicated? Not really. It simply means step to the rear of the bus or trolley so that there will be more room for others to get aboard. Tilly and Billy work for the Capital Transit Company, traveling highways and byways, climbing hills and going down grades. They have a tough job, but they never seem to get tired. You see, they're doing their part in the war effort, and they play a big part in America's march to victory, because each day they carry thousands and thousands of people to important and vital work. Tilly is a beautiful creature. Her trim, streamlined figure is the last word in style. She was born at the hands of ingenious engineers and is designed to give the best for the most people. And Billy the bus, a handsome gent, was designed for the same purpose. Before they start out on the job in the morning, they like to primp and groom themselves to look their best. They have special attendants to get them ready for their daily trips. And Mama and Papa Capital Transit, like all good parents, are very careful of the people they choose to take care of their children. For instance, there's the fellow who washes Tilly's face in the morning. He's very gentle, especially when he washes Tilly's eyes. And when Tilly or Billy get pains in their springs or squeaks in their brakes, Mama and Papa Capital Transit have specialists take care of them, just like the specialists in the hospital but their operations can be performed right at home. Why, when Billy gets a cold in his carburetor, they take him in, diagnose his trouble, dose him up, and send him out again well and strong. When Tilly and Billy leave their house in the morning, their faces are all nice and clean. They even wash behind the area. And they always have a smile. That is, at the beginning of the day. But sometimes, at the end of the day, they are very unhappy indeed. Tilly and Billy weren't always like that. It's only in the past year or so that they've returned home downhearted. You see, before the war, life for Tilly and Billy, like life for Mr. and Mrs. Citizen, was geared to peace. Mr. Citizen took his time about the morning paper. If he was a few minutes late, he'd make it up by stepping on the gas a bit. Those were the bright business-as-usual days. When Mr. Citizen drove his car to work, and Mrs. Citizen went off in her own car to buy the family groceries. Then came Pearl Harbor. Washington changed from a medium-sized city to a big city almost overnight. Houses grew where none were before. Vacant lots became developments. Apartment houses sprang up like giant mushrooms. One-family dwellings were turned into two-family homes. Well, things are certainly different now for Mr. and Mrs. Citizen. Yes, sir. Mr. Citizen rides to work with Tilly. Good old reliable Tilly. And Mrs. Citizen gets to the grocers with Billy the bus. Still, Tilly and Billy didn't mind the changes so much. They got more help. Mama and Papa Capital Transit saw to that. In the last two years, they purchased 132 streamliners just like Tilly and 500 modern buses that are blood brothers well, gasoline brothers anyway, to Billy. Everybody pitched in and helped to carry the crowds. And if you put all these healthy and eager-looking children, nieces and nephews of Mama and Papa Transit close together, they'd reach from here to there, and maybe a bit further. Still, even with all this help, Tilly and Billy's task became greater. And Tilly became worried. Well, you probably would, too, if you carried crowds of people many of whom thoughtlessly like to stand up front instead of equalizing the load. Tilly can't understand that. She says if they were giving out free popcorn and candy in the front, she might understand. But her display cards in the rear are just as pretty as those in the front. Tilly insists, and rightly so, that her job is easier and she's much happier when she can carry more people. 
and she can carry more people to work, and she could get more people to their homes and families and their dinners faster if only they would move along the aisle. And so could Billy. Why, Tilly and Billy have passengers who stand up front when there are actually seats to be had in the rear. You wouldn't believe that, would you? Well, just watch Tilly as she goes by. You see, plenty of room in the back. Billy says he thinks sometimes that he must have glue on his floor in the front the way passengers' feet seem to stick there. You see, Tilly and Billy just hate to pass up people when they have the capacity for others. There's nothing they dislike more than to leave people on a street corner or on a loading platform when they're able to take about eight or ten or maybe fifteen others who can't get aboard because the people inside don't remember what they saw when they were outside. Have you ever been left behind because there just wasn't room for one more, not even you? That's the thing that makes Tilly and Billy so downhearted when they come home at night. Tilly knows that people must get to work on time, and if other people stand in the middle of the aisle when there's room in the back, it just isn't cricket. But Tilly's motorman sometimes can't make people understand that, and it makes Tilly so sad that she wants to cry. One of these days, she threatens to really get angry and flip her chassis and politely joggle people to the back. Poor Tilly. And poor Billy. Billy goes through the same thing, you see. Tilly and Billy have many routes to run over in the city. Billy alone has dozens and dozens of bus routes that reach out to the very edge of town and way beyond into Maryland. You may have seen one of the maps that Mama and Papa Capital Transit give away for the asking. It shows how the routes spread from one edge of the city to the other, with lines crossing and crisscrossing, all to serve the people of Washington. You know, it would take an awful lot to stop Tilly and Billy on their daily rounds. Outside of an occasional tummy ache, I don't know of anything that could stop them. But like all children, they do get dirty. Tilly and Billy don't like to be seen on the streets that way, but they know their job is to carry people. And when things are normal, they get their baths regularly, and then they shine with pride. Tilly and Billy do hate to be slowed up. They have enough trouble getting places because of the traffic that moves through the downtown area on any ordinary weekday. But when somebody gets aboard with a dollar bill, instead of having the exact fare or a token handy, or when Monday morning comes and passengers present $10 bills instead of the $1.25 they need for a pass, Tilly and Billy get just plain puzzled. But they get puzzled most of all at the passenger who won't move to the rear. Tilly and Billy need your help to do a better job. Next time you stand in the aisle in the front of the car or bus when there's room in the rear, Next time you board either Tilly or Billy with a dollar bill when you have a dime handy, or next time you get aboard with a large bill to purchase your weekly pass, think of Tilly and Billy. They're willing and anxious to do their share in getting you to and from work, to and from your shopping expedition, in the minimum of time and with a maximum of comfort under wartime conditions. But they can't do the whole job themselves. Tilly the trolley, and Billy the Bus need your help. And by helping them, you'll be helping both yourself and the other fellow in the job of winning the war. <laughs>